Leviathan and get out of here. So goodbye. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Good luck, guys. And Mr. P. Hey, hey. Back into this one. More XP's, your resident Canadian Dota 2 caster, Brax, my trusty companion, as Newsome top lane. Going to run into, uh, bump into snaking here for a moment, and it is going to be that MSS4 position, Wind Ranger. Pretty damn strong uh, dual lane here, Brax. Eh? Yeah, definitely very strong. But, um, I don't know. I, I think the Veno actually won't be able to lane this. Mm -hmm. Like, at all? Like, you'd think that, uh, you know, with E.T. and Venomancer, you'd be able to stand up to most dual lanes, but it's Windrunner, Beastmaster, with the uh, Drow Aura on top of it. I actually don't know how this is going to go. Yeah, you get the extra bonus physical damage from the Wild Axes. It could be real dicey for these uh, couple of heroes. And, you know, Venom, ranged hero, but a little bit slow in attacking and, and moving in general. So, could be, uh, could be a rather risky, rather perilous lane for him. So SVG. Um, Joins up just to secure the rune top lane, but it will end up being a two for two trade off. And meanwhile, Lokarn doing Skyrath Mage things, bottom annoying Rezo out of lane. And uh, like we saw with RTZ the previous game, it'll force Rezo to TP in towards the tower. There is a uh, lane ward here down for the Dire as well. So it looks like this will be where they intend to make the most action happen early on. MSS makes his way down bottom, looks to maybe try and secure first blood on Lokarn, but he's actually just going to swap for now with SVG's Winter Wyvern. Hmm. Pretty interesting that the uh, VGJ Storm decide to put the Winter Wyvern up top with Beastmaster instead yeah. of the Wind Ranger. You think Wind Ranger like has better lane support? But um, oh, actually MSS is dead. Yeah. Nice body box by Jenkins gets the burrow off with the uh, damage from the Skyrath Mage. They're able to secure first bud, so good start off for Leviathan and. Uh, and this is going to allow Snaking to farm with pretty much impunity, though, right? I mean, you got the Cold Embrace behind you, maybe even a point in the Arctic Burn, and uh, allows you to get off an extra set of Wild Axes. Yeah, definitely. And the uh, MSS went for the Power Shot level 1, so we could try to trade back and forth with the Skyrath Mage, but in the end, it ends up biting him. Usually we see the, uh, the win run. Mm hmm So the dual Ranger lane for now, bottom lane, is going to... Take a casualty, but they'll just continue to go back to farming. Uh, and, and, you know, it feels like without a misstep or without a couple levels in, in concussive shot. Well, I say that top lane, a little bit of action happening here, but the Gale through two from BSJ will keep Nusham alive. But yeah, I was going to say, it just feels like without a misstep, uh, they should be fairly safe in this bottom lane. Yep, the bottom lane is safe, but not so much up top snaking. Jesus, DT hits hard. And Nusha, I'm going to be able to back off a lot of trading. Regen very lacking on either side here in this top lane. BSJ on one tango. Nusha on one as well. And their counterparts pretty much at parity as far as regen goes. One to nil for Leviathan here in the early going. And uh, as Dragon Knights tend to do with a Style Shield and Quelling Blade, uh, Yawar getting off to a good start as far as CS goes, even versus the Grave Chill of the Visage. Yeah, it's a weird matchup because... Uh... DK doesn't really pressure the Visage, but DK also is completely untouched by Visage. Like, he just ignores him and farms the mm -hmm. Glowing Blade, so it's complete free farm. Mm -hmm. But uh, Visage doesn't really transform into hero until he hits that level 6 mark, so this is kind of expected, I guess. Yeah. And at least you can secure that the levels will be there pretty early for, for Sammy Boy. Just four denies thus far. As long as Sammy Boy can stay on top of the Grave Chills when the uh, range creep gets near near low he should be just fine to continue progressing mss gonna whiff the power shot bottom lane and jenkins makes his way over it to the west to deter any further aggression from the wind ranger yep this lane is actually going very well for leviathan this bottom lane the uh, sand king and skyrath mage have pretty much full control over this lane mm -hmm. and uh, i like the way they set up their lanes they could have had et in the bottom lane instead of the uh the skyrath mage but it makes a lot of sense they lane it like this because of course the uh, ET melee hero against Dro, yeah. right? You have to walk in close range to hit these heroes, so quite smart. Yeah, having the one range, one melee set up on both sides of the map is going to mean, in general, that they can kind of keep aggression at bay. And uh, yeah, as we mentioned before, the, the mid lane going very well for Richie J Storm here early on. So despite conceding the first blood, it looks like the lanes feel pretty darn good for them. Even BSJ's 
uh, Venomance are here being surpassed in CS by both Snake King and Resolution. Yep, top three CS leaders blocked the side of PJ Storm. But as you mentioned in the draft, it's uh, going to be really nice for the tempo of uh, Leviathan to, to have their Sand King get off to an early start. If he's able to get a level, uh, speaking of that Sand King, into Lord's Resolution with the Burl Strike, the Gust only connects onto the Skyrath, unable Rezo was to hit it onto Jenkins. And now Concussive Shot comes out, Jenkins has another Burl Strike, they get a double kill in the bottom lane, Leviathan 3 to nil up against the undefeated first place to BCJ Storm in the groups thus far. And a couple of tips fly out onto Rezo as well. I'm pretty sure the Courier just killed Rezo. He had his stick in the bottom right-hand slot, and then uh, he just moved it there actually after it got completed, but it got shifted into the top right slot, so he probably pressed the wrong hockey for it. Oh, rip. Middle tower is under attack. Very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seven charges probably would have kept him alive. Echo Stomp going to be dodged by a Snake King top. He'll be able to secure that five-minute rune. And the Radiant, in fact, will get three of them. SVG and Snake King have a bottle of their own in this top lane. We're seeing more and more of this uh, side lane bottle. And BSJ gets caught with the Arctic Burn and the Splinter Blast. Wild Axe is there. Nice dodge. By the Gale from Snaking and the Stomp. BSJ could be in trouble. One more Wild Axes and a right click should finish him off here. And Snaking will just right click him down into Fatal Range. And now Nushim in trouble. Splinter Blast is there as well. Seven stick charges available for Snaking, but not willing to concede his death when he, he got the most important kill out of the lane. And VGJ Storm come roaring back with that one. Yeah, very nicely played. The, uh, the sidesteps from Snaking managing to yeah. juke out the Gale. Very nicely done. He's going to pull his wave, force BSJ to blast it under tower, let the Cardi do a little bit of work as well. BSJ forced to Gale the uh, Siege Creep. And after a 3-0 lead for Leviathan, the gold now in favor of VCJ Storm as you are. Pops his first Dragon Form mid, he'll do that along with the Siege Creep wave, wave here at the 6 minute mark. And uh, put in some pretty significant damage in. Sammy Boy though does pick up the familiars uh, almost simultaneously to the Dragon Form coming out. And uh, we'll kind of try to put an end to this. Grave Chill comes out, no TP's inbound though to this mid lane. but. Yawar, even with three points in the Dragon Blood, taking a uh, pretty fair amount of damage. Yep, but now Visage, finally. This hero's online, right? You can actually last hit, push these heroes out, feel like a real hero that's threatening now. And assess bottom lane, Power Shot Flies does not connect with Lokarn. I'll be forced to salve up. Rezo, last thing under tower still, though, doing pretty admirably on the Drow Ranger, considering just as a Wind Ranger support nearby with 30 CS. Stop top lane Snake King in trouble. Splinter Blast will try and keep them at bay, but it looks like BSJ and Nushim should net themselves a kill here. Wild Axes do fly out. And uh, a nice denial from SCG as well. Onto the Beastmaster. Unfortunate for the uh, Leviathan safe lane. Meanwhile, bot lane MSS. There's a couple of arcane bolts thrown his way. Jenkins in trouble. Gus flies out, but the burrow is through it. One last right click though for Rezo. Nets the kill and the win run away from MSS. No, won't keep him safe. The uh, ward vision from the dire side facilitates that kill for the Skyrath. But they do get two for Rezo in the bottom lane. A nice little catch up for Resolution who pole vaults him to second overall in the network. Yeah, that was very good for uh, VGJ. And this game gets even worse and worse for Leviathan because Beastmaster's about to hit 6. DK's going to yeah. have his ultimate. Like, he took half the HP from the mid tower with that one push just by himself. Yeah, it's a top power, rather healthy, but like you said, you know, after a, a, a rocky start as MSS finds himself a kill, bottom lane. Things looking better and better for VGJ. Dragon form, Dragon Tail, pop mid onto the Visage. And even with the Grave Chill, looks like he's in trouble. He will fall. Corrosive Breath and Arctic Burn Dots, ensuring that the Visage takes a spill mid. Oh man, and the birds are next too. You know, when Visage dies over and over, right, and he's got no birds to work with, it's just, it's just so sad. It is. He's got no more friends. The hero seems to uh, not do all that much. Meanwhile, Resolution bottom lane. I find it easy to Working on Jenkins, who was 
perhaps in some sense the silver lining for this lineup early on uh, is that his lane was going very well but now ichij storm in the bottom lane with a couple of response kills no real item progression here for the sand king just a ring of health on top of the tranquils and so ichij storm very content with how the last couple of minutes has gone Maybe they can start to put some pressure as a unit into this top tower. Speaking of which, though, Sammy Boy with the familiars is going to do some damage to mid as we have a, a bit of a break in the action. You are making his way over towards that mid lane tower. This game is so weird. Because, like, uh, Sand King isn't in a position where he can actually pressure the Draw Ranger in front of him. Because he has to hit level 8. Sand King's almost 6, but not quite there yet. And uh, the safe lane from Team Leviathan is being heavily, heavily pressured from the Beast Match. Like, there's going to be a point where Venomancer just can't lane anymore. Like, he's mm -hmm. already gone down once, but now that the Roar is available, I don't see how he can possibly even want to stand in this lane. But then again, there's nowhere he can really rotate to make a play as well. It, uh, it feels like they need to move too many heroes to actually make a play somewhere. And no. uh, it just seems so unlikely. And they, and they don't have that big teamfight ultimate from BSJ as well, and he doesn't really have any opportunity to push. I mean, even in the support duo of EGJ Storm side, you have so much wave clear with the Splinter Blast and the Power Shot, uh, that it just feels like this, this Venom pick has been a, a bit awkward through this early game for Leviathan. We'll see if they can kind of recover through the teamfight avenue. But for now, EGJ kind of farming everywhere on the map. Yeah, and they are accelerating, and there's nothing coming to stop them at all. Like, Venomancer's just gonna keep doing what he's doing. It's not like it's gonna hit some gigantic power spike that changes the game. Like, yeah. this is what the hero does. He sets up in a lane with wards and tries to take control that way. I mean, Visage, people want to move to him. He doesn't really want to move, but he's got this DK in front of him with 18 armor that he just can't get through. Three bounty runes at the least going the way of the Radiant side as well. Meanwhile, mid lane Dragon Form popped once again. By you are, and uh, the Vis is just nearby, perhaps looking for the denial. They do get the glyph off. Meanwhile, bottom lane, they go in on the Skyrath Mage. Jenkins is low as well, and with the TP in from Snake King and the usage of the Roar, two kills for free for Leviathan. Meanwhile, though, maybe not entirely or for BGJ Storm, I should say, not entirely for free as mid lane they were going on you are, but a beautiful Winter's Curse on top of the Visage is gonna allow him to finish off his teammate, which is the Nusham Elder Titan. And nice rotations all around the Beastmaster down to bottom, then MSS and SVG quickly to mid. And this will secure them not only three kills across the entirety of the map, but also the tier one mid and potentially even the tier one bottom as they begin to put pressure into it. Inner Beast nearby from Snake King, level three, and the Drow Ranger. But looks like TPs from Jenkins and Lil Karn will stymie the bleeding for now. Yeah, Precision Aura on the Catapult to make the hit for like 130 damage on the tower each mm -hmm. hit. It's ridiculous. And we saw them take a tier 3 last game yeah. uh, for Optic. Alright, MRP. It's a 7,000 gold lead at 11 minutes. And it's about to get even worse and worse, right? DK Ultimate comes up in 35 seconds. There's no mid lane tower, so Visage feels like he just can't sit there anymore. They are making rotation down bottom, finally. But um, this feels more like a reactionary play rather than the play that they're making on their own. It's more like, well, Visage doesn't want to go back mid, so might as well go bottom and push this tower. And because it's a uh, reactionary, right, they're already on the back foot. They've lost their mid tower. Mm -hmm. They feel like this is the only real option they have. And I guess this isn't so bad, though. BSJ has a bunch of uh, plague wards up top, so it slows down the push by, you know, good two and a half seconds. And it'll give the Visage a little bit of gold, but, you know, being in a, in a scenario where they have to be together and lay, well, Stop climbs out onto Yawar. They don't have enough damage to kill this DK, but they will at least snag the rune away from him. Uh, I was going to say, being in a scenario where you need to have multiple heroes in lane, if any at all, um, is going to mean that often you're splitting experience, and maybe just now Jenkins picks up his epicenter. Still, there's no Poison Nova for BSJ, so they just can't quite assemble a fight yet. There's no uh, initiation tool on their side as far as items go. SVG, though, looking to ward, could be in a little bit of trouble. Gets the Arctic Burn off, though. And it looks like he'll be able to make it to the low ground. So, desperately trying to find some space is Jenkins over in the bottom side, but now he looks to join the fray as he'll burrow up MSS. And Mystic Flare will be there, but the wind run allows him to make it back. It looks like Arcane Bolt will actually finish him off. The tower shot will do the deed beforehand. So they do get the one kill, but it's 80 to 90% of this HP taken out of the tier two top lane before that happens. 
Yeah, and that's uh, it is good for your sanking to rotate, but of course he wants to finish up his core item so he can actually begin team fighting, or else they're just gonna have to drop his tier two towers for free. We're gonna go out right on top of the shrine. Looks like the stop will be there to keep Lokarn up for now, but they'll kill off the Elder Titan instead with Rezo up on the high ground. Snake King is still surviving up on the north side. They get the Dragon Tail off as well onto the Sand King and finish him off. Double kill for Rezo and a kill for Yawar. And this tier two, not long for this world. Cold Embrace will keep snaking in fighting shape. And with the Inner Beast, maybe they put a couple of right clicks into this tier three. Yep, perhaps. And with that uh, tier two tower going down, Roshan becomes an easier objective to take because, of course, they can't TP to the tower to actually reclaim back that part of the map. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's truly when the game spirals out of control. I know it's a 9,000 goal lead at 14 minutes, which is insane. But the game doesn't really end until there's like a, a Roshan play, right? An Aegis push. Yeah, BSJ perhaps hanging around a little bit too long bottom lane. Uh, may just end up going down the Corrosive Breath here. He switches to Strength Treads and it'll help him survive. But yeah, there was a ward on top of the shrine and... Oh, um, nice. Uh, <laughs> Yawari Shadow Bladed under it. So BSJ was aware, started backing. Um, but perhaps not quickly enough. Just makes it away. MSS. Oh, breaks the smoke. Yeah, gets the win run off. Jenkins, though, looking for the burrow, finds it uphill. It's, again, that ward paying dividends for the dire side. They do get the Wind Ranger kill early on, but now looking to re-engage with Rezo. Looks like they'll find the Sand King trade. On, under a sentry, though, was Yawar. He's going to be forced back. They do have the Winter's Curse, however, and so looking not to uh, convene too tightly was the Leviathan squad overall. It'll be a one for one. No real trades being found elsewhere. The Visage Bird's not being microed currently. Top lane <laughs> are going to be pulled forward to maybe try and put some uh, some damage into this tier one. Okay, that's interesting, right? They know that uh, VGJ Storm are just going to group up and run down lanes together, so the Visage Bird's just split push instead. Of course, they're extremely vulnerable when they're split pushing because you don't have the aura to protect them. They died yeah. at anything, but um, it makes sense. They need to find something that can actually do on the map to be productive because right now they're just sitting behind their towers and just waiting for VGJ Storm to come to them and try to take some sort of fight, but no blink on Sand King makes it so that they pretty much need a smoke to be able to fight effectively. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, Vanguard, it makes a lot of sense against draw lineups, especially once you complete the Crimson Guard. Lots of right clicks coming out, mitigates a lot of damage. But uh, it's one of these cases where you need way too many items to actually yeah. fight on your turn. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a while before that's completed up. In addition, they really don't have much damage aside from just their innate toolkits. We saw them bring down the support Wind Ranger, but even that was a little bit difficult. And it's it's a in excess of a 10k net worth lead generated to this point in the game, only 16 minutes in. And we are going to see VGJ Storm take a peek at the Roche with the Cold Embrace and the Focus Fire. Should be a pretty quick Roche attempt. Yeah, it's going very fast with the uh, Drower, Eastmaster, or Winner to tank it up safely too. And this, there's honestly no way they can really contest it. They do have good heroes around the Roshan pit, but it's just the farm discrepancy is way too big at this stage of the game to really fight it at all. Yawar begins preparations on the mid lane after taking the Aegis and uh, he'll be joined by his teammates shortly. SVG though makes a retreat back into the raiding jungle. Could be threatened. We talked about the potency of this kill duo here. Jenkins and Lokarn looking for the burrow. Nice fly over the cliff from SVG and Avery gonna make his way to safety. PSJ H Dom has a Cardi here, but MSS gonna rotate in looking to find the uh, SK. It's actually a pretty big commitment from the TJ Storm to take out the Initiator. And now Rezo on the north side working on the Skyrath Mage. And look at this hero with no armor, just gonna be shredded by the bow of Rezo. And that'll mean e an, a pretty easy, it feels, mid lane push for them as they uh, are joined once again by Snaking, who's top lane. Yep, and BSJ slowly building up the ward army. They die in two hits to pretty much every hero on the side of BJ Storm because of the <laughs> bonus damage from Drow, but it's better than nothing, right? Mm -hmm. I just can't see uh, Leviathan's win condition. Like, they need to be able to fight, and they haven't been able to fight at all since, like, the four-minute mark in this game. Yeah. It's, it's pretty rough. Still holding, uh, still holding a skill point is BSJ at this point. Um... 
looking to, oh, I see he uh, got the talent, what am I talking about? But still doesn't have the poison over, has the veil though, and they make a rotation into bottom lane to take out MSS. In the meantime, Snake King forcing in top lane, pop the Necro 2s here, and likely will force a reaction out, as TP was still in the backpack for Sammy Boy, he now TP's back, but he's not gonna have his birds with him. And Snake King notices that, that it's the Visage, tries to go forward into, onto him, but uh, will not be able to net the kill in the meantime. They do end up getting the Winter Wyvern bottom lane. Debuff from the Solar Crest. And it makes Snake King a little bit vulnerable, but he's able to back out to safety. Reza wanted to press up to high ground, but you know, it being daytime may have been a little bit dicey. All right, well, still, Snake King creates a lot of space up in the top lane, and they could have potentially led to something, but it doesn't happen. The big issue here is Sand King is not farming anything at all, right? Like, he has no space to work with. He's 2,000 gold away from Blink Dagger. And uh, only Venomancer can actually push out these lanes safely. Even Visage is pretty threatened by these heroes. And they do find Ryzen with the smoke, but they go the wrong way. Unfortunate. He's got the Aegis as well, but yeah, didn't have yep. too much support inbound. So probably could have died twice if they were able to uh, locate him. Jenkins will try and uh, hit some jungle creeps, but as you mentioned, he is a far cry away from anything significant as far as item progression goes. Snake King, though, perhaps in a little bit more of a vulnerable position. His hawk is going to get taken out. Axes will fly, and that'll tip off Leviathan to his whereabouts. Um, but in the meantime, the rest of VGJ looks like they're going to reconvene in the middle lane and look to press forward. They have an Aether Lens up on SVG as well as he finds himself a nook in the tree. So a little bit longer range of initiation for that uh, Winter's Curse, which we've seen do much work already um, with the Visage being caught inside it. Top lane, Skyrath Mage going to be taken out as Rezo doing work with his Shadow Blade thus far. Nothing is safe on this map at all. And the uh, MSS draws a circle over the only area Leviathan can actually enter. And they're approaching with the small, walking up the high ground. Good vision in the area for the Dire, but an instant roar onto the Elder Titan is going to stop the stomp. They'll be able to take him out. Snaking taking a lot of the damage, but so is BSJ. And it's a two-for-one deal in the early going in the bottom lane. BSJ running down to the south. The Necro unit's going to purge him up. MSS still pursuing and has a Shackle in three seconds. We'll get the power shot off. Shackle available now. will latch onto the tree and MSS as his teammates look to work into the base of the Dire. Takes out the dire safe lane carry. Tier three gonna drop in the meantime. Rezo from the low ground with the Dragon Lance, putting in some damage into these towers and Lokarn really not able to get close. We've seen already what Rezo can do to that. Poor flying chicken. You are into the Shadow Blade gonna make his way up towards the top side of the base and gets in between the two stops. Aether Lens is there, it's forced to pop his BKB, but almost baits in Leviathan because of it. Now BSJ in trouble. Jenkins gonna be dusted up, but he makes it back. And a nice covering Winter's Curse to uh, help Yawar TP out. They won't end up getting the racks for it, but they do secure uh, the buyback of BSJ's Venomancer and do some major economical damage as we see a 20k net worth lead generated here by the Radiant. Yep, and VGJ Storm, they're able to attack multiple parts of the map, right? They're not all just barreling down one lane, they're making strategic plays across the map, giving them the space to keep hitting these buildings and make plays. Yeah. Very nice. Arcane Rune on Snaking as well, allows him to pop the Necro books with ease. He's got a roar if he needs it. They don't have their DK just yet, as Yawar was uh, forced to TP out under his BKB, but the Sand King walks forward into a gust, and he's going to be taken out. Jenkins does have buyback here. But on the sidelines for 30 seconds, Glyph is going to be popped, rotating around. MSS looking to join the fray as well. As Resolution finishes off the melee racks, backs out to reset with his unit. Wild Axe is flying through. Roar is there with the power shot, perfectly placed. The stomp will keep them at bay for a moment as Sammy Boy still survives. BSJ jumping forward with the blink into the ultimate. But the BKBs are there, just like Blitz mentioned in the draft. And Rezo feeling nigh unkillable at this point as they eliminate the first set of racks. Yawar working on the tier 3 mid takes that down. And BSJ, the former VCJ Storm carry, is going to call it against his former badge as the undefeated VCJ Storm looking just like that sounds. Taking out Leviathan Reunion in 22 minutes of the draft. Yep, not even close, honestly. It's uh, it's also the nature of the draft, right? A drill ranger with the DK, once you get off to that good start, you can...